everybody, welcome back to the commentary. We just wrapped up a session on the time, no, not the time lapse, the animation, stop motion animation feature of the GH5 as in all loops cameras. If you didn't see that, make sure you go back and watch that one. This is a follow up on that. And these are the questions that come up on that afterwards or might be completely off topic. So going back through the chit chat that was already in the room in here, Marvin PA, the paranoid Android asked, can you do a combo special of the GH5 course plus the affinity course? Um, what, like to buy them together? Uh, sounds confusing. <laughs> I mean, I got so many software courses available. If I start bundling stuff like that with hardware, it's like all over the map. So, um, no, but if you're a paid member of photoops.expert, you get 20% off of everything on the store, which includes the live training, which includes uh, live training you get for free streaming. You can download it for only a dollar if you're a paid member. But um, as far as any bundles or things like the GH5 training, you get 20% off of that. And yes, the dirty secret is you can get 20% off of the, of the uh, pre-sale price, the pre-release price, if you're a paid member. So you really can get it for like dirt cheap. So just, just throwing that out there. Um, so no, I'm not gonna bundle it, but there's some pretty good pricing on it already, I do believe. Uh, John McCabe had asked, I'm brand new to the camera. I'm assuming you mean the GH5. Can you show me the item in the menu? Do I need to set up so that when I'm focusing in video mode, it will punch in to get critical focus? Okay. Um, yes. Now, one of the, the important things to know is that you, you don't, it will not punch in while you are recording. So this is something that people ask about a lot. Can you punch in while recording? And the answer is no. And there's, I've heard two different rationales to this. And they both make sense. Uh, I'm sure people could argue it, but this is what I've heard. Number one is processing power. The you're shooting 4K, you know, video on the 4K 60P. It's just it's a lot of processing power. It's very processing intensive. Pushing into the frame apparently is more processing power required, and it just it doesn't do both. The other thing that I've heard, and this one's uh, possibly more logical, is and neither of these are official Panasonic things. This is just kind of what I've heard. The other reason is. Whatever you're seeing on screen here, minus the on-screen menu, which you can turn on or off, is sent out over the HDMI. So if you were shooting with a, a Ninja Assassin, uh, for example, and you're recording your video from the GH5 to an external recorder, and you hit that manual focus and suddenly it punched in for critical focus, that would punch in on your output as well, and you'd kill your shot. So that would be bad. Uh, so I've heard both of those. Maybe there's a merit of truth to both of them, but you put them together, and that means that you cannot punch in for manual focus while shooting. You can punch in, however, before you're shooting, before you actually start shooting. And this works in both video, uh, video and photo mode. So let me put the camera into video mode since that's what the question is. And um, I'm gonna have to find it because I don't know offhand where that menu is on here. Um, menu coming up. Why is it doing that? It's showing the menu. It used to show me the menu. I'm doing something different. Anyway, all right, so let's bring this up. So we are going into Let's, uh, let's see, you're probably in focus. That would make sense. Press quick AF. Um, auto focus assist lamp, no focus list priority, focus switching, manual focus assist, there it is. Manual focus assist is the one that you want. So if it's off, then it doesn't go in at all. If you have it on this mode, well here, let's do, go to, from bottom to top. So that's off. This one means that you push the button that looks like that, which is the FN3 button. The function three button is right above the dial to punch in. This one means when you focus the lens, when you just start manual focusing, it automatically punches in. And this one means it'll do it on either when you start moving the lens or when you push that button. So I'll go ahead and leave it on there. Let's uh, activate that. Okay. And now, why, oh, I know why I'm not getting a picture out of screens. Hold on. I need to change something in the camera. Because I'm in video mode, um, let me set this to record area. No, that's not it. What is, oh, oh, my HDMI output. No, it's at 1080p, that's working. Why am I not getting picture? Oh, maybe that, is that it? Yes, that's it, okay, now we go back. Because I was in the stop motion mode, that's why. Okay, so we were, just to recap, we're in here under manual, fit, manual focus assist. It is set to do both. Um, I put the camera into manual focus, so I just hit the hardware switch on the back to go into manual focus. And let's go ahead and point this at our little Lego dude there. Oh, and you can see it already did it. So as soon as I start to move the focus ring, it punches in. And now that it's punched in, I can, using the thumb dial on the back, I can zoom in closer or farther. So it looks like my Lego dude's got a uh, 
stitch down this side there. I can pan around the scene just by dragging my thumb on the, the LCD display, so I can pan around, or I think I can do that, yeah, I can do that with the multi controller as well, the, the, little, the little joystick, new little joystick guy, so I can get that to exactly where I want. And if I just take my finger off after a moment or two, it will zoom back out automatically, I do believe. I think it will at some point. I have no patience for that, so I'm gonna hit the shutter halfway. Oh, there, it did it. Uh, hit the shutter halfway and that will also pull that out. Now, if you want to check focus without actually moving the dial, because obviously if you move the dial, you're gonna change focus. So let's just say that I've, I've focused on there. Well, they're not focused. Let's say I've focused. I'm back to looking at my scene. I wanna check focus without actually moving the dial. I can hit that button on the back, the FN3 button, and that's gonna punch me in. So that is how you do that. So either way, you can set it so that you it only, it, it only happens when you spin the dial, spin the focus ring, only happens when you push the button or does either. For me personally, I have it set to, let's go back to my settings here, I have it set to only do it when I punch it in. I don't want it to, to automatically punch in every time I twist the focus knob. So, but that's just me. So it is totally up to you and how you want to do it. Hopefully that answers your question, John McCabe. Whoa, lots of comments down here at the bottom. All right. Gear site, oh, okay, this is a question about the animations. Is, does it create separate video file each time? Yes, it will create a new video file each time you go in and process a new video file. It just creates a new one, and of course, your original stills are always left behind. Pardon me. Ben 5 Shuttle, did you learn about your Lego animations back in your Apple days? Does John Lasseter know about you? <laughs> As if I was any good at this or anything special. Seriously, on YouTube, search Lego animations are just like, oh, uh, you're going to find some great stuff. Really, really good. Tom Kahn says, shout out, just got my GH5, Sigma 18 to 35, and Metabones all in stock at Image One. The guys you met at NAB who had the camera in stock, wonderful folks there. Thanks for the info. Awesome, Tom. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, Image One, uh, Shadi is the owner of that camera store. It is a really cool shop down in, uh, down in the LA area. Ventura? Is that, no, not Ventura. Valencia? Somewhere. Anyway, it's LA area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those guys, because they're not one of the big huge box stores, people don't think of them automatically as a place to go buy when you're, on, when you're not a local to them. And so that means that they probably have stuff in stock. They uh, were being told that they had the GH5 in stock. I know that a while ago they had the Vlogs in stock and would even take a picture of the Vlog code and email that to you if you asked them to after you bought it so you could get Vlog installed right away. So definitely check those guys out if you are in, in, uh, in a hurry to get your camera. Brent says, can you address how to go back in the camera and make a video from a time-lapse stop motion if you goof up? I did that. I did that in the last one, but just for you, I'll show you again. So all you got to do is go into the menu, go to the play menu, and now over here, oh, now, now I have to wait for the thing to recycle. When you do the play menu and the video out, there it is. Oops, uh, there it is. Um, it takes a while. Anyway, so there it is. So there's time-lapse video. So you can just click that and it will generate a time-lapse stop motion, which is what I have. It will look for your stop motions. It finds it. You hit set on that and then you can choose your quality. So exactly the same way as you would normally. It's just that it's there available afterwards. Sheila House says, shout out also. Got my GH5 and Vlog from Image One as well. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, very good. Uh, that's great to hear. I'm going to call Shadi after this and say, hey, I've sent you some customers. Uh, great service, fast delivery, and everything is well packed. Nice to hear. S super, very cool. Thank you for sharing that with us, Sheila. D Tech Logic says, so far I have the 12 to 60 and planning to buy another lens. I looked at the Olympus 7 to 14 and the Panty 7 to 14. What is recommended to get for the GH5? Well, as always, it depends on what you're doing, right? I mean, clearly what you do. But if you're looking for that 7 to 14, um, I do not have any experience with the Olympus one, so I can't compare it. I do own the uh, the Panasonic one. It's great lens. I use it, you know, when you need something that wide, which isn't very often for me, but I use it not exclusively, but I'd say almost exclusively for real estate stuff. That's pretty much the only time that that lens comes out. I tend to take it with me on a lot of trips and then not use it. I just, I just rarely need something that wide, but it's a great lens. It's fine. I don't have, you know, I don't really have much of a basis of a comparison. The nice thing that I will tell you about that lens it is an aspherical lens, which means that there is minimal, minimal edge distortion for a lens that wide. That's kind of important. And one of the tricks to getting absolute minimal distortion is to keep your camera true and level. You want to have that thing as perfectly straight, not angled, not tilted up and down, as perfectly straight as possible, or perpendicular at least to whatever you're shooting, and that will keep your edges, your lines, as straight as possible. And then if there's still any distortion, maybe you have to tilt up or whatever, Lightroom or any other app, Photoshop, whatever, will straighten those out for you beautifully. So it's a great lens. I really like it. Um, also, on this note, I should, I should point out, yesterday, yeah, yesterday I built, and so t in today's videos that you're looking at today, if you scroll down into the, um, the comment, the, whatever you call it, the description, 
I built three uh, wish lists, they're called, but um, shopping lists, whatever, on B&H that are my GH5 recommended. So there is a GH5 starter kit, there is the GH5 photographer's kit, and the GH5 filmmaker's kit. Um, needless to say, as you step up in those, they include more and more stuff. There's overlap between them. So it's the GH5 camera is in each one of those kits. Uh, and one of, let me just pull it up on here and I'll show it to you guys. Um, the, um, the uh, one of them has an, one extra battery, I think. One of them has three extra batteries. You know, things like that. The different size cards that are in there. That's all listed. It's, it's in everything. So if you really wanted to go crazy, you could just go to the wish list, look at everything, and go add to cart, and just add everything to your cart, and uh, and spend your paycheck pretty quickly if you really wanted to do that. Um, but here, let me just show you what it looks like on my screen. Here we go. So these are the kits. So I started with the GH5 starter kit. It is just the camera with the 12 to 60 Leica because I really am liking this lens. One extra battery and two 32 gig SanDisk cards. The next one, I wonder actually, did it stay? Did it keep the number of cards in there? Yeah, it did. Okay, quantity needed two. So that did stick in there. So good. So that's there. So that kit, uh, total 31 1193. The photographer's kit, I got rid of this Leica lens. I put in my favorite primes, so the 15mm 1.7. The, you'll notice this isn't the Panasonic, but that Zhongyi lens that I love so much, that 25mm f0.95 all manual lens, and then the Noctocron because <laughs> I love the Noctocron. I think there's two extra batteries in this pack and then 64 gig cards for that one. And is there anything else in there? Uh, one to six or seven, one more thing. Oh, and then a MiPhoto road trip tripod because I've been really, really liking these MiPhoto tripods. Really great value. And then the filmmaker's kit's got the GH5. Now we're back into a couple zooms, the 12 to 35 and the 35 to 100, both, I think, essential filmmaker lenses. I put the Speedmaster back in there again because if you're doing any kind of low light, super low light work, this thing is just bitching for video. This one has probably three or four extra batteries. We got the 128 gig cards in there. I also added... Uh, the Shure VP83 lens hopper microphone, because that's the microphone that I chose that I really like. The Ninja Inferno, because it's just too cool if you're doing this kind of work, you want to get serious about it, that's a good thing. Your HDMI cable, you'll need um, power kit for the Shogun and the Ninja, you'll need that. A cage if you want to go that route. Uh, a, the big tripod. Now this tripod right here, this is the brand new, uh, with the brand new head, the N8 nitro, nitro, nitrous, nitrogen dioxide, I don't know what the heck's in it, it's got some crazy nitrous thing going on in there. Tripod head, I have one of those on its way to me from B&H for testing, so I will be doing an unboxing on that once it gets here and then play with it for a while and give you a report on that. Um, so yeah, that's coming up, just as a little heads up on there. And there's anything else, that's everything on there. Also, by the way, so this, you see this up here, this is a little secret of what I'm working on, memory cards. I know people have, it would probably help if I actually put this on screen so you knew what I was talking about, memory cards. There we go. So I got a few memory cards in my wish list here. This is not a public wish list right now. This is just for my own note taking. I am, I've decided that I am going to do a roundup of memory cards. I spent a bunch of time on chit chat with B&H yesterday talking about all the different memory cards that are available that are for this camera that are the UHS-2 super high speed cards. We went through the different brands. Um, unfortunately, B&H can't loan me memory cards. So this is the only things they can't loan for review are memory cards and batteries because they can't resell them, they said. So that means I need to buy them. Um, that was almost $500 worth of cards in there. So I'm not doing this anytime soon, but I do plan on doing that, buying a uh, buying some of these memory cards. I might end up buying the 32 gig ones, just smaller ones, so that I can, in fact, um, do a bunch of tests on them and tell you which ones I like the best. So I will be doing that. Hey, Gearsight, thank you very much. Look at that, throwing out a, a little contribution. I really appreciate that. It says, thanks for all the vids. I've been using a pair of G7s and my GH5 arrives tomorrow. Awesome, I hope you'll have some info impressions soon on the new Panny 8 to 18. I want one. Oh, I really want that lens. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice one. That'll get added to my to my filmmaker's kit here as soon as that thing is available. Uh, that's a, that, yeah, I wanna get some impressions on that too. So thank you very much for that contribution, Gear Side. I do appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's see what else is going on in the comments here. Scrolling back through, um, where were we? Sheila, we got yours, Detailogic, we got yours. So lens-wise, I don't know if we even remotely answered your question, but that 7 to 17 is a nice lens. If that's the focal length you're looking for, I'm glad that um, the gear site mentioned this. Look at the 8 to 18, that Panasonic 8 to 18, that's a, looking like a really nice lens. I think it's gonna cost quite a bit more than that 7 to 7, 7 to 14. But, uh, but check it out. Martin says, recently took some photos myself on the GH5 and a friend using a Canon 5D Mark III, user of many years. Afterwards, when comparing, he said, I think the GH5 got better detail and better color. That's impressive to hear. 5D Mark III is no slouch of a camera. That's a hell of a piece of gear. So 
Uh, that's really nice to hear. That is obviously not a pixel peeping comparison. That is a personal opinion, and I think that's an awesome opinion. Martin, I think your friend is very, very smart. Uh, ben 5 Shuttle says, when manual focusing the GH5, does the system respond in the same way a manual focused DSLR would? My GH3 seems sporadic slash nonlinear. Well, it is nonlinear. It is not uh, mechanical. So a DSLR has mechanical focusing, which means there's gears in there. When you turn it, it is physically turning the lens in relation to what you're doing. The focusing on all the Lumix lenses are drive by wire. So this focusing ring isn't actually doing anything. It's not actually moving any gears. It is sending a signal back to the camera to say, hey, move the focus this way. That is how most modern it's mirrorless, as far as I know, all work. So there is a difference. What that also means is that you can have very slow focus if you're moving it slowly, and if you turn it faster, it can accelerate, which can be quite handy once you get used to it. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but once you're used to it, I think it's, uh, it's a great way to go. So I would say it's just something you just got to get used to. Mm, let's see here. Joshua says, is it possible to retake, remove, or add a frame of stop motion if you mess up? Yes. That's a really good question. Um, let's do it. I, I'm almost positive you can. So let me just get this thing down here so I can see what I'm doing. Hit play and waiting for it to sync up with the output screen. Okay, there we go. So I am in play mode. Let's see if I go up. Well, that's just plays through it. Okay, stop. That's not what I want to do. Um, oh, down arrow. Because it's the output looks a little bit different on the big screen, but at the very bottom left corner, you see there's a down arrow option. Then let's see, what does that do? Um, it says submenu. No, that goes back. Yeah, submenu, sequential play from the first, from the current. No, that's not what I want. I want to, don't want a sequential play. Down again. Hmm. This is not. Okay, here, let's do this. Let's try this. Pausing one by one. Okay, there's a frame. Can I delete that frame? If I hit delete, nothing's happening. All right, maybe this is the wrong approach. Let's try this. Delete single, delete multiple. Let's go delete multiple. Go into that, edit all the pictures in the picture group. Yes, I want to edit all the pictures in the group. Oh, I don't want to delete all the pictures in the group. That's not what I want. Okay, let's try this again. Delete multi on that. Edit all pictures in the group, proceed no. Hmm, so that doesn't do it. Hmm, I wonder if you can only do it while you're shooting. All right, let's try it. Let me go back into shooting mode here. Screen is blacked out. It'll be back momentarily. It'll be back momentarily. There we go. So back into shooting mode. We're going to start a whole new um, stop motion here. So obviously, I'm not going to do a big one here, but let's just do a quick little sample here. Let's uh, go into stop motion mode. Oh, darn it. i got to wait for this to refresh again. Let's go into make sure we're all set up for this. Where was it? Page. Oops, wrong. Oh, I'm in video mode. That would explain a lot. Let me get out of video mode. Go to camera mode. And waiting for the screen to come back up. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Come on, baby, you can do it. There we go. Back into the menu, time-lapse animation. We are on. Okay, we're all set. Yep, we're all set to go. Okay, so now I'm going to take a picture. Okay, and then I move the thing, and we do another picture. And we'll move the thing, and do another picture. Okay, so there's that. And now, can I delete one of these? Let's see what happens. If I hit delete, nothing happens. If I hit the number, the four, end. No, I don't want to end. Hmm, maybe you can't. Interesting. You would think that you could. That would seem like an obvious thing to want to be able to do. Let's try this. We go into the play mode. Stop motion video. It's going to reset the screen again. Do I have any options to edit this thing from here? Set that. No, maybe not. That does seem like an oversight. There's got to be a way to do that. That Because, you know... Obviously, if you make a mistake, you don't want to be stuck where you were. Let me, I'm just going to unplug this and see if anything changes on that without the video out going on. Uh, so you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. But I go into play, submenu, sequential play, upload, upload all. Nope, we saw that before. That's not what I want. Down, submenu, down, nope, sequential play. I don't, I'm not finding a way. Huh. That is interesting, isn't it? Let's see here, one more thing. Delete confirmation, that's not what I want. Slideshow, I'm looking to see if there's another delete option in the play menu. No. And if I just go back into normal play mode, try this again without, and I hit delete, delete single, 
delete multiple. Oh, I want to switch cards back to my um, card that's got the stills on it. No, doesn't seem to do it. Interesting. That is interesting. You would think that you would have that option. Hmm. Do me a favor, post that as a comment on this video once it's published. And I know that might be a while, it means you have to do it later on today, but that's the only way to guarantee that I will see it again later. And then I will dig into that a little bit more because I'm not finding it here. It, to me, it seems like you should be able to do that. So maybe there's some secret that I'm missing. Uh, and if not, then I will certainly feed that back to Panasonic. Although if this feature has been unchanged for a long time, I don't see it changing anytime soon again, but I will certainly inquire and see what I can learn about it. Thank you for bringing that up. Gearsight, thank you again for your contribution. That is super awesome. Gearsight also says, I just received the spider light plate I saw in one of your earlier videos. The spider light holster you're talking about. I didn't know about it, but I'm happy to say it works perfectly with my old Spider Pro holsters. Oh, so the plate to go with your new, your new plate for the old holster. Got it. Super. That's cool. I love that thing. I don't have it here, but um, yeah, I absolutely love that thing. It's a great, great tool. I'm glad you enjoy it as well. Ben 5 Shuttle says, acceleration and manual focusing. Didn't realize that. That's probably explains the confusing, non-repeatable behavior I witnessed. Thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Just uh, It just takes some getting used to, honestly. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, Ryan says, is there a way to take a picture and then manually insert it into the progression if you upload on a computer? Yeah, yeah. once you take the, pic the, the pictures off of the card, then you can do anything, right? You're, they're just a bunch of pictures. The computer doesn't know that it was a sequence. So then you can delete, rearrange, insert new shots, whatever you like. Uh, there's, we saw in the initial setup that you can add to an existing sequence. You can continue to shooting, continue shooting to an existing sequence, pick up where you left off, which would be handy if you needed to power cycle your camera, or you're running low on battery or whatever. But, um, but it doesn't look like inserting in the middle of it or deleting individual ones is possible. But once you get them off of the off of the camera, you can do anything you want. So absolutely. All righty. Uh, but then, oh, and then Ryan's asking, but then can you load it back into the camera and then package it nicely? Mm, probably not. Probably not. But you can build a stop motion animation on your computer with a lot more advanced features than you can do in camera anyway. So I, that, that really wouldn't be a problem. All righty. I think that's it. That's everything. Uh, all the comments that have shown up in here. Super. Thanks a lot, guys. That was fun. Um, don't forget, just because I've already got it on screen. Well, I don't. That's a lie. I don't have it on screen, but I'm going to put it up again. Um, I will be doing later on today in like an hour. I'll be doing this. So I got to go get ready for this Affinity Photo Basic Editing at photoapps.expert slash live. And of course, don't forget about the GH5 training at gh5training.com. A full-on training course on the GH5 currently in progress and soon to be uh, starting to release little bits and pieces of that. All right, guys, thanks a bunch for hanging out today. This was a lot of fun. Remember, this is the new format split into two videos. So if somehow you're watching this and you didn't see the original video that was, this was based off of, which was stop motion animation with the GH5, then be sure to check that out as well. Otherwise, we'll see you guys. Oh, 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 don't, hopefully you didn't go. Uh, one more thing. Tomorrow and Friday, I'm going to be out of town. I'm going up to Portland. Um, I will, I'm we're driving up tonight, so I should be able to go live tomorrow on schedule. I have no idea what I'm going to do yet because I'm not going to have this. I'll be in our, you know, Airbnb where we're staying. Uh, so we'll figure something out. But I hopefully I will be going live on schedule. It won't be from here. And I have no idea what I'm going to do, what I'm going to talk about. We'll figure it out as we get there. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye.